Now you're watching. You are now watching. You are now watching. You are now watching Out on Our Own Oswego. Out on Our Own Oswego. Out on Our Own Oswego. Out on Your Own Oswego. O X 5. O X 5. O X 5. O X 5. That's good. I'm Al Roker, and you're watching Out on Our Own on OX5. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Out on our own. Living on our own. Really gotta go. Yeah. On this show, we already know. Come on, this 24, this time to go. Young and dumb and missing home. It's time to live out on our own. Yeah. Hello. Oswego, welcome back to the best show on WTOP 10, Out on Our Own Oswego, OX5 Season 2. I'm your host, Zach Nussi, and for the last episode, I'm squatted up. To my left, I got the best co-host anyone would be blessed to have, Justin Clint. Yeah, clap it up, clap it up. And to my right, our out-of-studio talent, who is honestly everywhere. If you don't know who she is, um, you need to get out more. It is Kiara Montero. Yeah. All right, this is the show that gives you all the tricks, tips, and skits Oswego has to offer. And if you enjoy this episode, there are others just like it on WTOP 10's YouTube channel. And if you just want to see the clips we do outside the studio, you can go to Zach's personal channel, Nusi96. So this being our last episode ever, we wanted to do something different before we get into the Al Roker interview. We want to highlight the OX5 crew, and while doing so, they're gonna give advice for present or incoming students. Then we'll sing, swing it back to just Zach and myself. Yeah, so definitely, um, if we want to get that camera started, uh, yes. a little nice little attachment we got, a uh, nice idea from the Sun Asa show. So yeah, just please give your, uh, your name, your major, your year, and some advice you'd give uh, any uh, student. All right, my name's Tim Altbacker. I just finished my freshman year. Uh, I'm an audio engineering sound production major, and my advice would be for incoming freshmen, nobody's gonna make friends for you, so like definitely get out. I missed that opportunity, but uh, joining TOP has been one of the better formative experiences so far. Yeah. Uh, I'm Cletus Stepaz, I'm a junior. Um, my advice for anyone would be, if you want to do something here, you just got to look it up. Go on Google, type in what you want to do in Oswego. I bet you you'll be able to find something on or off campus. It's here, I promise. You just got to look it up and get out there. Get out there, yeah. Getting back in the studio here. Hello everyone, my name is Josh Gerais, and I'm a and I'm a senior, and I'm also a broadcasting major here at WTOP. I do a lot. I'm a production assistant. I work TD for Nightly News tonight. I do so much more. I would say my advice: just get involved here. You can be a you can be a major. She really is. Why well, hello, um, my name is Mark Patalski. I am a broadcasting major and uh, an MBA student here at Oswego. Um, some advice, um, definitely networking. Um, even if you um, are involved in a lot, um, just getting to know people. Um, after college, you can still maintain those relationships because that's gonna be huge, um, not just for your social life, but your professional life as well. Hello everyone, my name is Michael Griswold. Uh, I direct this show, broadcasting and mass communications major with uh, two minors in photography and audio production and design. Um, I'd say some advice was just, is just always be learning. You know, there's always someone that can teach you more even if you're at the top. There's always someone that's above you that's gonna know more. You can really learn a lot from people that are around you. I'm Stephanie Janisi. I'm a broadcasting mass communications major and a minor in business administration. And my advice is to just get involved as much as possible. Like when you're a freshman, like join any club. Like even if you think it's going to be weird, just join it because you'll meet great people. What's going on, everybody? Uh, Hunter Truman here, broadcasting major, also a senior. You know, going to be out of here soon. Uh, but anyway, uh, I just want to give a quick shout out to mom, dad, Devin back home, all four cats, you know. Uh, also, ex-president of the United States, Jimmy Carter, he knows what's up. Uh, anyway, uh, I just want to say, you know, don't be afraid to join clubs and uh, join programs, you know, such as WTOP here 
you know, it's a great experience. Unfortunately, I waited till my last semester to do it. So for those of you that are coming in now or are seniors already, do not be afraid. Come in and join. Uh, hey guys, my name is Thomas Caffarella. I'm a broadcasting and uh, mass communications major here. Uh, this is my second semester here at Oswego. I gotta say one of the, probably some of the best advice I could give is just getting involved in your uh, local, uh, not communities, I guess clubs. Yeah, that's, the, that's a good word for it, clubs. Like WTOP, one of the best things I've ever done here at Oswego. So just make sure you're getting as much out of college as you possibly can. How's it going guys? My name is Matthew Hernandez. I am the assistant producer on OX5, so I'm basically in Jess and Zach's ear, just keeping them on time. Um, I'm a broadcasting and mass communications major with a business, in, with a business minor. Um, my advice for any incoming freshman or current students looking to get more involved, definitely just get involved. And I know that a lot of people are saying that, but it is true. You do learn a lot doing a lot of hands-on experience with stuff like WTOP, WNYO, the Oswegonian, just to name a few, but definitely get involved as much as you can on campus, I would say. Okay, so we do still have two more people here. Okay, hi, um, my name's Emily and I am a freshman, a double major in broadcasting and cinema screen studies, and I am floor manager for OX5. My advice, go have fun, like join things, have fun. Yeah, what's that? Okay. <laughs> Someone want to take the camera for Jill? I'd love to hear some advice that Jill has as a person who is just manning the uh, camera. <laughs> um, okay, so what I would say is I came here from a community college back home in Connecticut, so like an unconventional route is like shouldn't be looked down upon. Um, you know, community colleges are not a bad thing. People might think like, oh, so-and-so is dumb, they went to a community college. That's not true. I saved so much money, so, <laughs> and it's honestly a great experience and definitely come to Oswego and get involved in WTOP. I've had the best year of my life here. Wow. You know what? That was some great advice and I'm happy that, you know, that we're a student ran organization. I'm really happy that these people were able to give advice. We're college students. All, all of us here. Sorry, my FB just <laughs> popped out of my ear. Um, but, you know, would you guys want to say anything? Any advice or anything along those lines? Just Kira? Um, well, um, first off, I'd like to thank every single person that advocated for me in the situation, if you know, you know. We have all been through it in some way, somehow, and I'm very happy to see other people understand what is going on has a deeper meaning than what it is. And I appreciate the support and I love y'all. But speaking on advice, honestly, um, just what I be popped out to. Um, <laughs> Just um, never give up, never fold under pressure. You know, um, I'm gonna quote G Herbo on this. Shout out G Herbo, um, one of my top five favorite rappers right now. He said, can't fold under pressure. Life full of challenges. So um, when you're getting involved, you know, you may it may seem overwhelming to you and the work may seem overwhelming to you, but at the end of the day, it's gonna be so worth it in the end. And I promise you that. That's very and well you're going to make yourself work worth it, I promise you. Y'all all, all going to make it. Don't even worry about it. Yeah, that's what's up, man. That's yes, what's I up. Agree. Kiara, anything you'd like to say? Um, For me, I just, one thing I learned this semester is, like, don't let fear stop you. I feel like I've come across so many great opportunities this semester, this being one of them, and it's because I didn't let fear stop me. Like, go for whatever you, you feel is best for you and make the most of your experience. It's only four years. <laughs> Yes, you know, I, um, you know, I'm very happy and blessed that you guys have had such a great experience, you know, here this past year and, you know, here at Oswego. Um, I'm really surprised that only one person shouted out their mom during that. I said, told everyone they could shout someone out. Um, I'll shout out my mom and pop. So, I, yo, shout out uh, Emily Newsomow and Danny Newsomow. I love y'all. You love know, you, mom. and uh, honestly, it's um, my advice I'd say is like, um, you know, I I'll talk about my parents. You know, I love them. You know, I'm blessed. They really keep me uh, grounded. And, um, you know, I, I truly do appreciate everything they've done for me, you know. Yeah. Um, 
it, it's um it, it, they're just amazing people and you know I hope that I'm making them proud at the end of the day um, I'm a hard worker just like my pops you know I'm level-headed and um, she likes to say I get my intelligence from her but like my <laughs> mom's and um, you know I love you all thank you guys for always tuning in and watching um, uh, yeah what do you guys say <laughs> yeah now see now that you said that but like I also would love to also thank my parents like they've been there for me since day one um, you're the reason why I'm here right now and uh, I really do hope I'm making you proud. Even so, sometimes like I'm just like, yo, am I making you proud? Am I making you proud? But I know deep down inside, like y'all know that I'm making you proud, and I'm glad that I'm doing this for you. And I'm not just doing it for you, but for myself. And like I really want to see because you've taught me so much in my life. So, and I want to thank you for that. Yeah. That's so I will say, um, as you guys probably heard, a common theme was a lot of people saying to get involved, and that this is not just for this campus, but just any campus. Um, you know, it's a, it's a learning experience. You know, this is us getting ready for the real world, and that's what this whole show is uh, has been about since day one. So it'll be in the name of the show, Out on Our Own Oswego. And, um, you know, that's why we like having segments, like being able to hear what you guys have to say out on campus, you know, things Kiara gets to do and try things. And, you know, that, that's why we like to go over social media posts, Just and I in the studio, and be able to see what you guys are posting and go try these certain events. Um, so you guys at home are able to see what we're bringing to, uh, what this school has to offer. Um, is there anything else you guys would like to um, announce or say, Kiara? No, I just, I'm really appreciative of this experience. It's been great. Um, yeah. Even being outside of the studio, like it was still a learning experience for me. A great time, <laughs> every time. Yeah, so. it's always great times here in the studio. It's like studio with you, of course, and then when we get to shoot outside the studio yeah. with you. And we're really happy that you're able to be here yes, with us. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, so, well, I think it's time, everyone. The yes, moment we all have been waiting for an OX5 special interview with Al, Al Roker. Roker. Say together in some quotations. <laughs> Please enjoy and roll the clip. Welcome to the final segment we have for you all. We had, we had to end it with a big finale because a great show deserves a great ending. With no further ado, we bring you an interview with a broadcasting legend from SUNY Oswego. He holds multiple world records, weather anchor on NBC's Today, class of 76, Mr. Al Roker. Al, how are you doing today? Doing well, guys. Thanks for having me. Yes, of course. We just want to thank you for dedicating your time and coming here. And it's a pleasure and an honor. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so how did you hear about SUNY Oswego and what brought you here? Well, I, I had, uh, you know, I, my parents had limited means. Uh, people talked about how great the state university system is. I, I knew I wanted to work in television, not necessarily on television. Uh, and at the time, I think uh, SUNY Oswego was the only uh, state college that had a, a, a robust uh television that back then it was called radio and TV. Uh, and, and so they met my stringent requirements. They accepted me. And, uh, I, I came to the college sight unseen. I didn't even come up to, to look at it. This was before the age of doing college tours. Oh. You know, you, you know, you could barely scrounge it around enough money for the, for the, uh, admissions fee, let alone, uh, drive to or fly to colleges. But that said, uh, it was, uh, you know, I was, uh, my biggest surprise when I got here was, we got there, was, you know, I knew it was on a great lake, but to me, a lake was uh, something you could see the other side of. And uh, when I said, well, oh, they're wrong. We're on an ocean. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm from Queens, so specifically Queens Village. And for me, it was definitely a culture shock. You also being from Queens, how was the transition coming from the city to the Oswego in the 70s? Oh, and also before you get started, also I know you grew up in St. Albans. I believe my, yeah. my parents, my parents also grew up in St. Albans in the same neighborhood, oh. yeah. Okay, do you know where? Yeah, they, oh man, I forgot the avenue. I think by Leslie Road, I believe. Okay, yeah, yeah. I was off of uh, 120th Avenue and Springfield Boulevard. But, uh, yeah. uh, you know, I, it wasn't, 
I, I don't know. It didn't. It, it didn't strike me as that hard. Uh, also, I think I was looking for. I'm the oldest of six, so I was looking forward to getting away from my brothers and sisters. <laughs> uh, <laughs> everything else was was a party. So, but no, it. it uh, I mean, look, there was some. I think the biggest culture shock was the food. You know, the, I mean, at that time, if it's hard to mention, there was there there was. I think my freshman year, they opened up a Chinese restaurant, uh, but no, you couldn't buy bagels anywhere uh, or, or anything like that. So, you know, of course there was the Oswego sub shop. Yeah. So, but you know, it, so it was a little bit of a, a culture shock, but nothing horrible. So coming to SUNY Oswego, focusing on graphic design, how did you end up as a meteorologist? Was there a specific class that inspired you? No, uh, to be honest, I, I, uh, I was just looking to fulfill a science requirement, and uh, uh, somebody said, "Oh, you take, you know, take the meteorology class." And so I did, and that was that. And then I took a, uh, then it was called ecology. I guess today it's environmental science, um, and I took another meteorology class. And but, but that was it. And I I didn't think anything more of it uh, until my sophomore year. Uh, you know, the media summit is named after Dr. Lewis B. O'Donnell. The, uh, I think he was the first chairman of uh, the radio and TV department. But in any event, uh, uh, I, I just had no plans of being on TV. I wanted to work in graphics or produce or write. And um, at the time, in 1974, Channel 5 in Syracuse didn't do a weekend, a full-blown weekend newscast. And the news director there was a guy named Andy Brigham, uh, decided they were going to start a full newscast with uh, news, sports, and an, a weather person. And so, you know, the, the news director went to Lou O'Donnell, who worked at the station uh, hosting a kid's show. And he said, you got any promising kids up there I could hire to do weather? And so came and Lou came up and he picked three of us to do a tape in... Uh, 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 Lanigan Hall, that was where the TV studio was, and we did the tape, and he took it down for us, and I got picked to come down and do another audition, and that was, and my first broadcast was, I think, uh, June of, uh, of 1974. Wow, that's a great story right there. Um, so, Al, we're switching gears a bit. What is it about SUNY Oswego that you still feel such a deep connection to the campus and community after all these years? Well, look, I mean, A, it's someplace, besides, you know, doing uh, uh, television news, I also worked at WSGO uh, in, in, us, you know, in, in town. I, uh, I worked at WRVO. Uh, in fact, I worked at WRVO during one of the most tumultuous times in our country's history during the Watergate hearings. I ran the board for that, for NPR. Um, you know, and I just enjoy, I, I, you know, there was something, you know, you go through something, you know, when you, you go through one of those classic Oswego blizzards, uh, uh, you feel like you've been through something. And it, it just, you know, they, they, you know, I mean, I had some great friends. I, I loved doing radio. There was um, there was just a, a, a sense of community there that, uh, and listen, I, I didn't go to Syracuse University, I couldn't afford it, but I have a feeling that it was a little less personal uh, because it's such a big school, whereas SUNY Oswego is a pretty, you know, by, by those standards, is a smaller school, at least it was then. Um, so, you know, when you have something like that, I think you cherish it. Of course. All right. So when you weren't in class, what were your favorite things to do in the Oswego area? Did you have a favorite restaurant or a bar that you like to hang out with with friends? You know, it's it, it's funny that um, I think Playboy magazine years ago, like right before I got there, uh, said that per per capita student, SUNY Oswego had more bars than any other <laughs> yeah, state very college. Very true. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's still true or not. Um, but, you know, I didn't really go to the bars. 
I, uh, uh, they opened up right across our, our, the radio station, WOCR, the student run radio station was down in the basement of uh, the Hewitt Union. And now, and, and right across the way was this kind of big empty space and they turned it into a bar called the Rat Scaler. Uh, uh, but, you know, I'd go, uh, you, you know, you, you do your DJ shift and you go in and you get a, you get a, a big soda and then come back. But, you know, I, yeah, I went to all, you know, you went to Canales, you know, for uh, like when your parents came up and they were going to treat you to a meal, you take them to Canales. Uh, there was a great place downtown. It's no longer there right on the river. Uh, I don't know if you remember, if, if you're standing on the bridge, um, uh, and you're looking toward the lake, there's an old stone building off to yeah. your left. Yeah. There used to be a place in the first floor called Cahill's Fish, and they made these great fried fish sandwiches. Uh, I always loved going out, Bev's Dairy Treat out on the loop. Uh, big, it was a big deal when they opened up, I know it's not there anymore, but when they opened up a Ponderosa Steakhouse, yeah, that was like, ooh, salad bar, <laughs> a ribeye, that's good times, that's good eating. <laughs> yeah, that's great to hear that you have so many memories. I don't think any of those, of course, many of those places are still not, uh, they're not here today. I mean, Bev's is still there, you know, that out there on, on the loop, Bev's and Rudy's. Bev's and Rudy's are still there. I went to Bev's the other day, actually, so yeah. Still, still good. Yeah, especially with the nice weather coming around here in Oswego, it's definitely the time to go to Bev's. But yeah, you know, look, that's and that's the thing. I mean, everybody talks about winter, but spring and summer, I don't know if you guys did any summer uh, classes, but uh, because, and, and funny, that was uh, because I was working weekends, you know, I was going to have to stay up at school anyway. Uh, so I started doing, uh, I started taking, loading up on summer classes. Uh, and uh, so that by my senior year, I, I had an independent study and, and two classes. Uh, so it was able, I was able to kind of coach in senior year. But that said, I kind of digress. Um, uh, you know, summer in Oswego is, is hard to beat. Of course, in the spring, I don't know if it still happens. Do the moon eyes still die by the millions and wash up on shore? I, I'm not gonna lie, I have no idea. There are these little fish. They're like almost like sardine type fish. And at the time, they and I don't know if they still, but there would be this die off of them and they'd wash up on shore. And I got to tell you on a warm summer day, man, it was rough. Yeah, I might need to go uh, check that out, um, especially yeah. like with the springtime fast approaching. Um, but something, uh, professor that you mentioned, uh, Professor O'Donnell, um, one of the many things you've helped contribute to SUNY Oswego is the Dr. B. Lewis O'Donnell Media Summit. What was it about that professor that made you want to honor him so much? Well, you know, a lot of times you have teachers uh, who, how do I say this? Who aren't necessarily, well, two things they're not still working in the profession that they're teaching in. And they don't give you the unvarnished truth. And, and, and Doc O'Donnell, you know, he was, he's still working doing uh, the Magic Toy Shop, which was a local kid show in, in Channel 5 in Syracuse. Uh, but he was also very honest about things. He said, look, I remember his intro class. He said, look to your left, look to your right. Uh, odds are one of those people in five years will not be in either radio or TV. Yeah, and that's kind of sobering, yeah. Uh, and he, he suggested things. He wanted us all to take accounting in case we were, because nobody wants to be a salesperson. They yeah. want to be on camera, or do whatever. Uh, but let's face it, sales is where the money is. So uh, he wants us all to be able to do sales. And I took this intro to accounting class. And I remember the first class, the homework assignment took me four hours to do one problem. I, know, I, I can't do it. I dropped that class faster than a hot potato. Sounds like an accounting major. Yeah. Pardon? Oh, I'm sorry. It sounds like, like an accounting major because I know a couple of accounting majors that had that same exact problem. It'll take one, it'll take like a good hour just to get through one question. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, who needs this? I'm not going into sales. So why am I? But anyway, he's he was he was a terrific teacher and he was a great advocate for students. Um, yeah, you know, he made this joke. I always tell it as a true story. I was taking a TV performance class. It was my first TV performance class. And he watched back the tape. And back in the day, uh, there weren't, it wasn't digital video. It was two inch tape. It was a reel that was like bigger, twice as size, twice the size of your head. Um, and uh, uh, anyway, it was, we were watching back my performance. And he said, did you know, Roker, you have the perfect face for radio. <laughs> But yet he was the one that put me up for the job doing TV weather. So, you know, he, he, that was the kind of guy he was. No, yeah, he sounds like a great role model, someone that you could definitely look to for advice and who really helped you um, get that initial start, a strong foundation for you. Is there any favorite milestone or experience that you've had in Oswego specifically? You know, I, 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 I there's no one thing that stands out. Uh, but, you know, it was, I just felt that uh, it was, and again, like I say, I didn't go to any other school, so I don't know. But I just felt that us SUNY, that uh, Oswego State provided you more hands-on earlier than say a Syracuse or these other big schools, communications, because your teachers knew, because they really knew you, uh, they knew your capabilities were and could help push you into those areas and um, and i just think there was there was a, a greater camaraderie among both students and faculty uh so that you know i i think you thrived and 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 that's i think the secret sauce for uh, oswego and it's affordable so that you know you're um, i think Dollar for dollar, it's a, it's probably, you know, one of the great uh, bargains in higher education. You know, when you compare it to, quote, the name brand schools, like where you would go to get this same degree, whether it's NYU or Syracuse or, you know, Northwestern or any of those places. SUNY Oswego can hold its own with any of those. Yeah, I definitely feel like I have a deeper connection with most of my professors here than I would at any other school, honestly. So what media organizations were you a part of when you were here as a student and what importance do you feel they have? I, I, I was basically at WOCR. We didn't have a TV station then. Uh, so there was WOCR, which was a campus run carrier current AM radio station. So the way it worked was uh, we had the radio station in, in the Hewitt Union and each dorm had a transmitter in it that and we were hardwired to each dorm and then the transmitter was plugged into the electrical system in each dorm so you picked it up by basically by the the the, the electric wires uh, in your dorm room i mean it, it was broadcast through that to the point where you could actually drive a little off campus because it would kind of broadcast through the streetlights on campus. Um, so I, I felt very uh, involved in that because we ran, students ran the radio station. Uh, WRVO was, yeah, still is there obviously the, and, and is bigger than ever, a public radio station. Uh, what was great about WRVO is in the summer, and I guess maybe during the week too, but certainly during the summer, you actually got paid so uh that was nice and and so those were the only two and, the, and really those were the only two media outlets on campus at the time you know there was no wtop yeah you know, uh it was just radio boom that's crazy because i'm not gonna lie like just just by the way you worded it with the wires and stuff i'm like yo i feel like we would have so much like can, it would be confusing, I feel, maybe. <laughs> like, in a way, right? Yeah. Well, it was pretty It was pretty simple in that, look, you didn't have to worry about the technical end of it. Uh, uh, you know, your job, you know, back then, we had just like, I mean, we like most radio stations, we had a record library. I mean, it's funny because today, 
there are no record libraries in, in a lot of uh, uh, radio stations. I mean, some of the older classical rock, classic rock stations still do, jazz stations. But, uh, you know, it was, th there's a radio show called American Top 40. Uh, uh, they play the Top 40 hits. And, and it was with this disc jockey, Casey Kasem. Uh, and, and you may not remember or know Casey Kasem, but do, did you guys ever watch the old, the original Scooby-Doo cartoons? Yeah, for sure, yeah. Uh, Casey Kasem's probably best known as the voice of Shaggy. Uh, hey, Scoob, how about a Scooby, uh, uh, Scooby snack, you know? Anyway, this was a, a, a program that counted down the top 40 records in America uh, as compiled by Billboard magazine. But back then, this was before satellite, this was before, uh, uh, you know, digital. So what they would do is they would record it on a Wednesday and, the, and they had something like, 300, 400 radio stations around the world, maybe more than that. But what they would do is they would press an L, they would press uh, three records, three LP records, uh, both sides, and then ship them. And this was before Federal Express. So they had to ship them and you'd get the special delivery. You'd get the, we'd get the albums on Friday. And then we would start playing and it was a three hour program. So this is probably, this is ancient history and nobody cares, but you know, that was, but the, you know, you got, you had to learn how to back time your, your rec, your, the, the albums, because at the top of the hour, we were what, ABC radio, ABC news radio, American information uh, affiliate. And so at the top of each hour, we hit a, a network radio newscast. So you had to be able to figure out, do the math, how many commercials can you get in? And th there was, subtract the hour, five minutes at the top of the hour, how many commercials do you have and how much program is there on those albums? So uh, it was, you know, it, it was it was fun. It was a lot of fun doing that stuff. I'm glad, I'm not gonna lie. I would have had fun doing it too. Yeah. But how? I know every story behind a person isn't everything nice. So are there any obstacles you went through during your college or your early career that you don't mind sharing? Well, look, I, you, know, you, you do get homesick. You, you uh, worry about, especially as you're getting closer to senior year. I mean, look, look I, I mean, I didn't quite have that issue because I, I was already working by the time I was working full time at Channel 5 by the time my senior year rolled around. But you, 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 you're not sure of what should you do with certain situations. Like I had a, uh, it was a program uh, 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 where you would study overseas in, in London and do an internship at the BBC. And all of my friends were going. And you had to put down a deposit of $500. And in, look, $500 is $500, whether it's today or 1974. But in 1974, Five hundred dollars was a lot of money. That's a lot. And uh, and and you had a certain deadline to where you could pull out and get your money back. Otherwise, you'd lose your deposit. And I uh, I I hadn't heard yet about my weekend weather job. And I, so I had to make a decision: Do I say, that, oh, "Okay, the heck with the job. I'm just going to go on on because it was for a full semester the next year." Or and live, you're going to live in London, and I some I thought, how great would that be? Or do I take a chance, draw up uh, and and say, okay, I'm not going to go. I'm going to get my money back, and then what happens if I don't get the job? Luckily, I got the job, but uh, uh, you know, you, you've got a lot of doubts as as you know, uh, uh, it's a it's a different time, and uh, so I, I wouldn't say I had a lot of obstacles, but. You know, I think like everybody, you know, you're, are you, am I doing the right thing? Am I in the right major? Uh, you know, it, it, you, 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 you wonder, you know, and, and unlike today where there's digital and cable and streaming and all, there were, there were two places you could get a job and that was either at a TV station or a radio station. Uh, so cable was just kind of coming into its own, barely. Uh, uh, you know, there certainly weren't the 
hundreds of channels there are now. Back then, Showtime had just really gotten going. HBO hadn't even started yet. Um, so cable TV was originally just designed to help people get broadcast TV. Uh, so, you know, but you know, you're in a new golden age uh, of all these different choices and potential possibilities. We are in a golden age right now when it comes to television and radio, that we have so much at our, at our disposal that um, we, we praise people like you and thank you for like laying down a great foundation for us students. The next question I have for you is, what advice would you give to an incoming or current student who are trying to get into the television industry? Be open to anything. Uh, because, you know, look, like I said, I, I meet a lot of students, uh, I want to be a sports guy, I want, I want to be a weather, uh, I want to be a meteorologist, I want to be a, a, an anchor. Uh, uh, maybe, but maybe there's something else. And, and you should be really open to it. And that's why, especially, it's a little late for you guys, but I, I tell incoming students to take as, as diverse a group of classes as possible. Uh, this is the, I won't say it's the only time, but the best time in your life where you can explore all sorts of uh, 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 ideas and all sorts of disciplines. And so, don't just focus on your major or what you think you, your major wants to be, but focus on being as well-rounded an individual as possible. Take philosophy classes, take, take geography, uh, learn about the world around you. Uh, you know, take, take as many different, take a language. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, it, it just, you're, I, I don't think anybody ever said uh, on their deathbed, you know, I'm, I'm sorry I learned about the world. <laughs> Not that you're thinking about deathbeds, that's closer to me, but you know, I, I, I just think that, you know, everybody wants to be the best in their field and that's great, uh, but I don't think you can be the best in your field if you don't, if you don't know what the other fields are. You're saying for a student to broaden their horizons and just to try many different things, like if you're a broadcasting student, just go out and maybe take a class about animals or learning about the world and maybe try a different club outside of whether it be WTOP, WNYO, just yeah. get involved. I, I, listen, I, I think, I don't even know if they still make the game Trivial Pursuit, but um, uh, I always took pride in the fact that if I didn't finish first, I always came in a close second uh, because knowing a lot or knowing a little bit about a lot of things isn't the worst thing in the world. I also take a PR class right now that I'm really enjoying. So, you know, that's also like some, a certain thing like I'm considering too, like in my future, like, oh, maybe I could be a PR professional or, you know, just trying to be as versatile as I can. Sure, because look, you, you never know, you know, where you're gonna go. Uh, you, you don't know what's the thing that's gonna and fire up your passion. Um, my, look, prime example is my wife, Deborah Roberts, who is an, uh, an award-winning journalist at ABC. She is a graduate of, uh, of uh, uh, UGA, University of Georgia, and she was a theater major and took a journalism class and was hooked. Uh, so, you know, you, you just never know. That is very true. Well, Mr. Roker, before we close out this interview, I just want to thank you. I had two goals for creating this show that you're going to be on out and around Oswego, to be the best and to interview you. And I want you to know I never gave up. I've worked for this interview for two years, and always the purpose was to have you on the show. Uh, you were just a young man just like us at one point. You went to school hours away from home just like many of us in the middle of nowhere at the time and yeah. you made your own college experience. So I just want this to be a reminder for all future, present, and past students that we all start somewhere, and wherever that person's standing right now is where they're supposed to be at this moment. This couldn't have been a better ending to this show. Next time you're in town, an Al Roker sub from Sub Shop's on me, and I just want to thank you again. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it, and, and 
you've got a bright future and just enjoy it. And savor, and that's the other thing. Savor everything. You know, we, we tend to get on these too much. Uh, uh, and you know what? Don't look at, the, you, you don't want to look at life through a lens, you know? Just experience it. It's, it is, um, it, it, it's so much more. I Every now and then I'm reminded I was, I can't remember where I was flying to or from and I was on my phone and and I was sitting at the window seat which I normally don't do because I like the aisle uh, but and and I just happened to look up I, I sensed this light and and the sunset was just one of the most spectacular the the, the uh who's that climbing crowding climbing behind? Uh, that's our guy Cletus right there <laughs> I, I wasn't sure whether he worked for you or not I just just wanted to make sure you knew there was somebody creeping, <laughs> there was somebody creeping up on you. Uh, thank, you for, uh, thank you for the heads up. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no worries, because I still, you know, he still might be creeping up on you. But uh, you know, I, I, if I had stayed on my phone, I would have missed that moment. And uh, uh, you can't experience life looking at a phone. Of course, I'm, I'm more of a hands-to-hand -hand person. I want to experience the real bonds in person. So I don't even like texting people or calling people. I'd rather just meet them in person. So, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I think um, we're all good here. Um, one more thing. All right, th this is outside the interview now. Uh, one more thing I'd like to know if you could do for us. I have a whole crew here that's, you know, helped me throughout this whole process. I value a team so much in the whole broadcast, like this whole broadcasting thing for the show. You know, they all came together and helped me out. And I'm not sure if you could give them like a minute or two more of your time so they could say hello. Yeah. 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 yeah of and, course. And, if, and if we could get a picture yeah, as get a well. Picture? Yeah, like, yeah. 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 <laughs> you might want to, you might want to move that. You, you might want to move that backlight. You want to shut that backlight off real quick? Yeah, we can take a, we can okay. take a selfie real quick. Um, <sighs> yeah. Wait, Alex, can you, can you go up there and take a photo? Or of all of us? Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's going to be the biggest thing. Uh, short people in the front, so like one, two. Um, all right. All right, we're going to take the picture in three, right, two. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Al. Appreciate it. Yes, have a great rest of your day. All right, you too. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. 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 Thank you so um so that was our experience that was our interview with mr al roker class of 76 um you know, I, I really want to say um, thank, thank you, Just, thank you, Keeks, and thank you to my team for making my dream come true. This was, um, like I said, it was um, two years in the works, and um, I, do, I do love you all. I appreciate all you guys for tuning in and watching each and every week. Um, it's, been, it's been a pleasure. Um, it's been a pleasure bringing you guys entertainment. Um, almost every Thursday. Uh, we, I know there's uh, times we've missed uh, a few uh, shows yeah. here and there, um, but they were for valid reasons. And, um, you know, that, that was one of them. You know, thank you, Kiara. I know uh, she of has course. a show called The Bigger Picture. Yes. And Check um, that out. shout that out. Shout when out they're the bigger not picture. on, we're on. <laughs> exactly. And uh, thank you for your support and uh, for tuning in. And I'd like everyone to come out for one last OX5. Okay. You guys ready? Come on, Matt, get over here, man. Oh, <laughs> All right, let's go. You ready? Okay, I'm going to put my paper right here. You ready? All right. Three, two, O, X, five. Let's go. Let's get it. Yeah. My paper throw was hit. Paper throw was hit. It should have been that. Thank you for
Shout out Mandel, slap up the rap, y'all. It's summer 21, so you know we got the shine, shine. COVID really y'all had us cooped up. Suburban's back to back, got the all souped up. All black rims spinning on the fame bus. Pull up to the party, acting like we famous. Yeah, we never got to leave. But if we leave now, we won't be able to see. See all of the greatness we all could achieve. So if you got a hand up, please follow me. I'm gonna show you all why you should believe. God really out here just testing 